Hello everyone and welcome to the remote edition of the Flow Visualization Lab. I'm Puya and I will be your TA for this laboratory. I'm preparing three videos to get you through this laboratory work and I'm also trying to keep them as short as possible. So make sure you follow them carefully and you will be done in no time. I'm expecting the whole process to take two or two and a half hours at most and you can save your progress at any time and come back later to complete it. But I recommend you do it in one go. That's gonna be a lot easier. Uh, that's all for now. So take care and good luck. In this introductory video, I want to get you familiar with uh, Google Colab notebooks and how to use them. So here we are uh, in an example notebook and you may be familiar with Python as a coding language. Well, each Google Colab notebook is an executable document that lets you write, run, and share Python code within Google Drive. A Colab notebook consists of a number of cells that can contain code, text, images, and more. For example, here in my notebook, I have right now just two cells. There can be two types of cells in any Colab notebook. You can have a code cell, which contains Python code that can be run on a virtual machine on the cloud. Google connects your notebook to a cloud-based runtime, meaning you can execute Python code without any configuration or needing to install anything on your own computer. You will get connected to a computer in the cloud and all code cells will be executed on it to provide a coding environment that can take advantage of all the functionality that Python offers. Other cells can contain rich text, which means they can contain text, mathematical formula, uh, images, tables, videos, and even HTML or JavaScript content. Using these text, text cells, we can provide information and context on the code that we are running or sharing on the internet. To make it even better, Google makes it easy to share these notebooks through the Google Drive ecosystem. The combination of executable code cells, informative text cells, along with the sharing capabilities, creates a coding environment that is ideal for collaborative projects and educational purposes. So here we are simply taking advantage of this free service provided by Google to have our lab, our lab session remotely. In the notebook window, you can see that we have a file tab that let us uh, open a new notebook, save, save a copy of the current notebook to our Google Drive, and also just print it as a PDF document if we want. And it has an option to download the, download the notebook as an IPython notebook as well. So make sure when, when you are saving your notebook, save it in IPython notebook uh, format, not the .py format. So anyways, uh, in the runtime, you can run your cells, interrupt the execution of your, your runs, or restart the runtime. And here, uh, you, you can see some information about the runtime that right now you are connected. Uh, so I have 12 gigabytes of RAM and 100 gigabytes of space to work with. And also Google provides one CPU and two threads for computation. On the left side, we have the table of contents, which is very useful when we are working with the uh, laboratory form. You can see the contents and job, jump into different sections. And here we also have the files. Uh, any files that you create in your code uh, gets put here. So you can see your file uh, in this section over here. So enough about the, the environment itself. Let's, let's create some, some cells. So if you go to the end of your cell, you have two options. You can create a new code cell or a text cell. Let's create a text cell first and see how, how we can work with it. So in the text cell, you can have text, images, or mathematical formulas as you want. 
So for example, let's put a heading. Uh, I call it a sample heading. And you can see the results on the right. So just a heading, let's input a sample paragraph. Let's call it sample paragraph one and sample paragraph two, for example. So you, you see that they are next to each other. So to go to a new line, you have to do two lines to actually go to the new line. We can also have some bullet points, bullet one and bullet two, for example. So there we have a text cell containing some headings, some paragraphs, and also some bullet points. Uh, in the lab session, you may want to attach some, uh, some images. So for that, uh, you can create a new text cell and insert the text by clicking on this option. And here, let's import an image. So this is the content of my image in human readable uh, code, but don't worry about that. Just create a new text cell underneath it. And there we have our image. So yeah, we have text cell containing just text, image, and let's input some also some uh, mathematical formulas. So for that, you enter your formula between two dollar signs. So let's import, for example, our Bernoulli equation. Uh, rho, no. Yeah. Rho v to the power of two plus rho g h equals constant. So there you can see that we can enter mathematical equations very easily just using dollar signs on, on either end. Let's say uh, you have some fractions. You can do fractions like this. You can input a slash and then you say frac, curly bracket, curly bracket. So a fraction of one over a, for example, or let's say a two to the power of two, then this minus another fraction, a curly bracket, so one over a one power of two. So there you have another formula. So if you want to enter special characters like uh, row, you just put a slash and say row. Gets, you, you will get a row insert. So let's put a delta. delta. Then we, have, we can have a big delta. These are characters that you may need in your report. So I'm just providing examples. Uh, and for example, the Reynolds number would be fraction of uh, VD over nu. So there you have it. You can enter anything that you want. Now you have everything you need to complete the assignment. You just need to add text cells and provide answers to the questions provided. In the report, you may want to import images. And for that, I recommend importing each image in a new text cell to prevent any misunderstanding between you and the notebook, just like what we did here with this image. Uh, but just for completeness, let's also create some code cells. So let me delete this and create some code cell. There, 
you notice that there is a play button on the left that you can push to run the code. Let's create a code that uh, draws a sine wave. And for that, let me just import some libraries. Import math plus plt. These are just libraries to do the calculations and plot the results. So let x be an array of numbers between 0 and 10 with a spacing of 0.1. Then we can input y as a sine of x. And then we can say plot x versus y. And then if we run the cell, we should get a sine, a sine wave. So that's, that's easy. Now let's turn it into a form. So we can do that by creating, adding a form. And we can choose, let's say, sign plot. So this is the name of the form. And then we can insert some inputs. Let's say, uh, for a sine wave, we can have amplitude, which is a number. We can also have an input for our initial angle, which is also a number. So there we have two inputs, amplitude and phi. We can say that our y is amplitude x plus p. So now we have a form. Uh, we have a form that uh, we can input some amplitude, for example, let's say 5. And then we can input also some uh, initial angle, like let's say 3.14 half a pi okay we cannot input it like that so let's say have half of pi and there our plot was created with an amplitude as five and a initial angle of half a pi so it's now a cos cosine wave so all the notebooks uh, in this laboratory was created in a similar fashion and now let's go ahead into our uh, lab report form and see how we can complete it.